Hi, I'm Mike Richardson, Vistage Chair and Resource Speaker here in San Diego, California. You know, every day that I read the newspaper, uh, I read about another industry going through turmoil, going through disruption. And there are two kinds of companies which emerge from a phase like that. There are victims and there are victors. Because all industries these days are experiencing the reality of this equation. Volatility minus agility equals fragility. Volatility is accelerating all the time. If agility isn't, we start to experience a gap which shows up as underlying fragility. Now, it may not have shown up yet, but it's there beneath the surface. And if the world raises the bar on us just a little bit more, things can start to break down. Now, our members in Vistage are not immune from this. In fact, since the beginning of 2012, at every group that I've spoken to as a resource speaker, I have done a research survey asking those members nine different questions. And the answer to one of the questions in particular quite surprised me. Um, I asked our members uh, the time period over which they expect their industry, their business, to be reconfigured, to be disrupted to a state that is largely speaking unrecognizable with how things are today. To my surprise, 81.5% of our members, despite the diversity of our membership base, 81.5% said five years or less. 36.4% said two years or less. In other words, more than one in three of our members expect their business, their industry, to be disrupted, largely speaking, to an unrecognizable configuration compared with how it is today within two years, one in three, and four in five within less than, within five years or less. We are all experiencing the reality of this equation, no matter what business, no matter what industry, we're in. So as I move through my 10 year anniversary as a Vistage Chair, uh, which occurs this month, um, the greatest weight of responsibility that I feel is to facilitate my group, my members, to be more agile and to prevail in this new reality so that they can enhance their sustainability. In fact, uh, my favourite question these days is how sustainable is your sustainability? so that they can have a greater sense of prosperity, a greater sense of success, a greater sense of happiness, and they can survive and thrive no matter what volatility comes their way in the future. These new dynamic times require new dynamic skills. And those of you that heard me speak when I was last in Australia a little over a year ago will know that that this is the focus of my work, the skills that it takes to have the agility we need. Indeed, uh, you'll know if you heard me speak that that's the focus of my work, it's the focus of my book, and uh, increasingly these days, I focus on interviewing what I call everyday agile leaders. Of course, uh, in business, but increasingly in non-business settings, like uh, Navy SEALs, uh, fighter pilots, firefighters, ER doctors, lifeguards, airline pilots. These are agile leaders who every day face this equation. And their agility gets tested every day. And depending upon whether they pass or fail the test, at the extreme, people can live or die. So I interview uh, what I call everyday agile leaders, and indeed I just got the cover article on the Risk Management magazine a few months ago uh, with an article called How to Manage Risk Like a Navy SEAL. As a result of my research over the last 10 years, I have distilled the agility challenge down to five roles of everyday agile leaders and I now focus my work around helping uh, leaders, executives, CEOs uh, 
in all kinds of businesses develop uh, those five roles and their ability to fulfill those five roles every day. So I was asked to return to Australia in February 2014 to do a series of all-day chair development workshops. And we'll be asking two questions uh, for the course of the day. Number one, how agile are your members? And number two, how agile are you in facilitating your members to be more agile? During the course of our day, we'll go into five elements. Uh, number one, a best practice architecture for business agility as a system. And we'll delve into that system and discuss that system in quite some depth uh, so that you can really understand the component parts, the moving parts of what it takes uh, to have business agility as a system. Number two, we'll give you some diagnosis assessments so that you can focus the improvement actions of your members and then monitor their progress uh, to become more agile. Number three, we'll give you tools and resources that you can use in uh, group meetings, in one-to-ones, in SWAT teams or Tiger teams, uh, uh, to do issue processing, uh, host presentations and, and much more. Uh, number four, We'll talk about ways in which you might be able to optimize your speaker planning and the curriculum that you put together for your members and how you can compound the learning value uh, from those speakers to enhance the agility of your members. And then number five, not least of all, we'll talk about how you can apply these insights of agility to your chair practice and your other business if you have one so that you too prevail in this equation and you avoid fragility in the future. If you're noticing any anxiety about the agility of your members, or indeed about your own agility with your own chair practice and uh, business, if you have one, uh, then I invite you to join us for the day for the uh, chair development workshop to really understand this equation and what you can do to enhance your agility to prevail in the future. You're a leader of leaders, and your ability to facilitate the agility of your members will have a huge impact on their future. I hope to see you there.